we're still down 580,000 jobs. I mentioned three and a half million women more now in poverty than four years ago. We haven't heard from the governor any specifics beyond Big Bird and eliminating funding for Planned Parenthood. I understand what it takes to, to make a bright and prosperous future for America again. I understand that I can get this country on track again. We don't have to settle for what we're going through. When he said behind closed doors that 47% of the country considered themselves victims who refused personal responsibility, think about who he was talking about. We are three weeks away from Election Day, and the race for the White House is still close. President Barack Obama and GOP challenger Mitt Romney met for their second debate Tuesday evening. For this meeting, candidates answered questions from about 80 undecided voters. Most of the queries focused on domestic issues. You're watching The Ballot. It's a weekly series where our political team addresses the big issues surrounding the elections. We are joined by our man in Washington, Chris Castile, joining us to talk more about the second presidential debate. Chris, thanks, thanks so much for your time. Oh yeah, I'm glad to be here, Dave. Chris is joining us uh, via Skype today from the Washington Examiner, the newsroom there. And Chris, one of the big questions heading into Tuesday night's discussions was centered on President Obama and whether he could make a stronger impression. Did he succeed? Oh, I think he definitely made a stronger impression, you know, and it, it obviously wouldn't have taken much, but, uh, you know, he was obviously much more aggressive. Uh, you know, he got into all the points that uh, people, the Democrats, his base, wanted him to make in the first debate, everything from the auto bailout to the, the comment that Governor Romney made about the 47 percent who don't pay taxes. He, you know, he brought up um, on more than one occasion, uh, Governor Romney's own financial uh, success and uh, just much more aggressive in style as well. But, you know, Governor Romney was no less aggressive. You know, it was, it was really pretty evenly matched in that sense. But definitely uh, the, the president had much more of a pulse uh, last night. You know, I'm not, I'm still not sure, you know, I, I don't know how you could, you know, definitively declare a winner in that debate last night, unless it, you know, it was attached, you know, some qualifier was attached, like you know, Obama won by doing so much better in the first time, or Governor Romney won because, you know, he again um, just you know showed that he could stand toe to toe with the president of the United States. But it was really, you know, it was kind of a it, it, at times much more of an argument and uh, a lot of bickering going on uh, than a debate. Both, you know interrupted the, each other several times, stalked each other around the stage, interrupted the moderator. And, and again, I'm just not sure for that undecided voter in Ohio or Virginia or Florida, wherever, you know, how, how that may have swayed them. But it definitely was a, a much different debate in tone. And Chris, let's talk about that. The candidates disagreed on everything from taxes, health care issues, and the deficit. And one of the most heated discussions was whether energy production is increasing or slowing. Now, as we know, energy is a big topic here in the Sooner State. But what did Obama and Romney have to say about the energy industry? It was not, not much that they haven't said, but it was, you know, it was a question about gas prices. And that's a tough question for a politician to answer. You know, I mean, what control they have over gas prices? You know, who, who knows? There are so many factors in, involved in that. It's tough, but, they, but each side definitely likes to exploit it. When, when they think they can gain an advantage, you know, against the other party. But uh, I'm not sure either of them actually even tried to answer the, the question about gasoline prices at this point. But, you know, what it got off into was more of a broader, you know, case about energy. And, uh, you know, before you know it, the president was talking about wind and solar. And, you know, those are obviously have nothing to do with gas prices. Those are involved with electricity production. And uh, the Governor Romney just pushed you know, the, the president really hard, as he said, on uh, production on federal lands. And uh, the president, uh, in the last year or so, even in, in Oklahoma, when he came to Oklahoma, talked about oil production, crude oil production, being at its you know, highest level in the U.S. in, in many years. Uh, you know, we're much less dependent on uh, overseas oil than, than we have been in, in, in many years. But as Romney countered, that, that's all from production on private land and what's happening on uh, federal land. Well, you know, that, that has fluctuated some. I mean, there clearly you had issues offshore with the uh, after the BP spill with production was shut down. You have issues with hurricanes and, and, and that kind of thing offshore all the time. So there are fluctuations year after year. 
you're in, 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 in all kinds of uh, uh, energy production on federal lands. But you know, I, I don't think that this, this decision is that tough for people, really. I mean, I, I think by now they, they've probably made up their minds where, where, what these two would do. I, I think it's clear after you know, almost four years of uh, the president's administration that he's, he was not as, as aggressive as uh, uh, Romney probably would be in opening up federal lands to drilling. And if that's what people want, I mean, I, I just think that they should figure that out by now. So, you know, we'll probably still continue to have that debate about is federal production up, down, where is it coming from? But in, in, I think their policies are, are pretty clear. And Chris, I think you're right about that. We've had four years of, of Obama, and after that first debate, you kind of know where Romney's coming from, and I guess timing is everything. But I think you're exactly right. People at this point have kind of made their mind up. They've heard really, from yeah. I mean, what, what do you need to hear? I mean, you know, they're, they're, they both say they're for all of the above, and, and the president is convinced that, you know, if you keep investing in some of these alternative energies, uh, that eventually they'll make up, you know, more of the of the energy base. And again, that, that's, you know, uh, it's in electricity production if you're talking wind and solar. Yeah, has tried to invest in battery production as well. But again, it, it's going to come down to the markets and what the markets are ready for. And, um, you also got the Keystone issue out there, and everybody knows where, where both of them are on that. So, you know. We are chatting via Skype with Chris Castile, our Washington Bureau guru out in Washington, D.C. <laughs> and Chris, we were talking about energy and how that relates to Oklahoma, and let's talk about some Oklahoma races here. We have a hotly contested congressional race in eastern Oklahoma to replace retiring Democratic Representative Dan Bourne. Chris, what's happening in the 2nd District? You know, it, it, it's interesting, Dave. I mean, it, that race was expected to be a big battleground for both of the national parties. You have a, a seat that's held by a Democrat that's seen as a prime pickup for Republicans because primarily it's in a district that voted very heavily for Senator McCain um, and, and, and uh, former President Bush in, in the last couple presidential elections. It, it, it's a overwhelmingly Democratic district by registration, but very, very conservative. David Dan Bourne, I'm sorry, has been a very, very conservative Democrat over the last eight years. But the Republicans saw it as a pickup opportunity because it's, you've got the president uh, on the ballot again, and you've got an open seat. So again, as I said, it was expected to be a battle where the national Democratic and Republican parties brought in you know, some big guns, bought a lot of television advertising, maybe outside groups, interest groups, uh, you know, also got involved and bought ads and everything, but it, it has not happened. Still though, they both raised a lot of money they, and, and maybe it could be for the Democrat, uh, Rob Wallace, in that race, given what I said before about how that district performs, and how it views national Democrats. Maybe the best thing in the world for Rob Wallace that you know the Democrats are not running ads in that race because if they were, then I think the national Republicans would probably respond to try to hang President Obama, House, you know, former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi around Wallace's neck. But he's been left basically to his own devices. Still raised over a million dollars, has about the same money in the bank, even a little more at the end of September than the Republicans. So it's. <clears throat> It's not even making a lot of the you know top 50 lists of, of races right now, but it's still pretty intense race. And you know I think the advantage really for the Republican, besides you know the whole president thing, is that you've got a, a candidate in Mark Wayne Mullen who owns a very successful plumbing company in that part of the state. He's got trucks all over the state with you know Mullen Plumbing on him, and for years he's been running ads promoting you know his business. So he's just got all kinds of name recognition um, in that district from that business that, that, that has been a you know, built-in advantage for him. And uh, so we'll see them. You know, both of them have about a quarter of a million dollars left. It's not an expensive television. It's a complicated television market because you have to, you have to buy ads, I think, in three different states or more. You know, I was about to say, that's probably a split market out there. It, it really is. You know, I mean, you have to buy them you know, in Tulsa and mm -hmm. Joplin, if you want to hit everybody, um, you know, Missouri, Arkansas, Texas. And um, you, you can't really buy cable there because you know, it's so rural that a lot of people just have satellites. So it's a complicated media market, but it, it's, it's an inexpensive one. So I think they both have the money, and it's not going to come down to that. It'd just be a really interesting... Uh, I really don't know how tight it is. There haven't been any public polls, and you know, I'm told that it, that you know, it, it, even though the Democrats, national Democrats, have kind of stayed away from it, thinking that maybe they they don't have a chance in it, that it, that it still could be a tight race. 
We were chatting with Chris Castile via Skype. And Chris, the next presidential debate and the final debate is Monday. It's in Florida. And Chris, they'll be talking about foreign policy. Is that correct? That's right. Foreign policy. That's, that's strictly it. I mean, not that that can't get into other things like energy. Sure. Um, you know, I, I, I presume that, that that will come up if, if uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about the Mideast and all the resources we've committed to it for so long, you know, protecting, uh, you know, free shipping of oil, free or shipping lanes over there and everything. So it, it is going to concentrate, you know, mainly on foreign policy. And I think you know, we saw a little taste of it last night with the, the very sharp exchanges over what happened in Libya um, on September 11th when uh, we lost an ambassador and three other diplomats um, in Benghazi at the, at the U.S. consulate there. And uh, the, the continuing questions about the administration's public statements uh, following that attack, I mean, I just, it, obviously it can't consume 90 minutes, but I think it will be a big part of uh, the debate on Monday as well. Chris Castile, a big part of our presidential coverage. Chris, thanks so, much, thanks so much for your time today. You bet, Dave. All right, our local team will be in the studio to talk more about Oklahoma elections later this week. And then we'll have a Google Hangout on October 31st. We'll bring Chris Castile back in for that, along with our local reporters here as we talk everything election. And, of course, we'll have more coverage of the, uh, the Monday debate as well. You've been watching The Ballot here on NewsOK.com. I'm Dave Morris.